Yeah, so uh, I'm working with uh, like Drupal since 2011, and it's been around about 10 years that I I did lots of Drupal projects. And uh, this is kind of my first presentation, presentation in a Drupal meetup so now. I joined lots of meetups in India and also Drupal Go Asia. I was part of that. But yeah, <clears throat> uh, recently I figured out something about the static site and I uh, had a thought that we might uh, look into that. So I'm happy to present on that. I'm starting my screen share first. Let me know. It's... OK, so today I'll be discussing about the static sites with in terms of a uh, landscape mm -hmm. with Drupal only, because uh, I'm a Drupal guy and I love to do with the Drupal, but sometimes it happens that we need a static sites and we still want to use the Drupal as in a, like it's easy to manage and things and all. So let's start with the Drupal uh, static site. So today's agenda, like it's a small presentation only. It will take around 10 to 15 minutes. And this is what I'm going to discuss in this presentation. And first thing, what is static site generators? Then we'll talk about the benefits, limitation, what we can do, what we cannot do. Then there are a couple of options available as in static site generator. I'll let you know about a few of them. Then we will going to discuss the term that is uh, Drupal <laughs> static site generator that is uh, absolutely uh, created for Drupal only. And we'll see into the architecture module. And I'll also show you how to uh, create, uh, show you how to create a static site using Tom with uh, on local and how to post on a Netlify and all. There are some workaround for the, if you use the static site, you cannot use your form and search. So there are some workaround that can be possible with the static site as well. So I'll also show you those things. Okay. So first thing I would like to say this, what is static site generator? Uh, before that, everyone know what exactly the static site, static site is just an raw HTML. There's nothing, no server, no backend, no language, nothing specific, just as simple HTML. Go to create an file with the DOS HTML extension and it will work on server without any backend uh, language. So uh, in initial era, we normally have the static site using the simple code with the HTML, CSS. Then we used to have a JS. There are lots of framework right now. They have only JS. Uh, so you can create multiple kind of site using those framework. But yeah, again, uh, for the static site generator, it will give you the same exact kind of a uh, site with the HTML, CSS, and JS. There is no need to run on any language. It's not a language dependent, so you don't need to worry about any Java, .NET, PHP, nothing else. Just uh, uh, simple files. It, it can be served from any any server or any CDN specific. You can say so. <clears throat> there are Popular options available. Uh, these are Jackal, Catsby, Quant CDN, Tom. So Jackal is a based on a Ruby. It's a liquid templating engine they are using. So uh, in terms of a uh, Jackal, you need to understand what exactly the, how to create the <coughs> project in Ruby and how to use the liquid templating. Catsby also a React platform and Gatsby also provide like you can also use these things with Drupal as well with the liquid templating and all. There are modules available, so you can also create uh, your site using the Gatsby and Drupal as a backend as a JSON provider. And on top of that, you can create your static site using Gatsby. There are a couple of GitHub wrapper you can look into that. Again, the third option, Quant Syrian, it is quite a good option right now uh, because. If you have a site and you just want to provide a static site and uh, using the quant CDN, you can export the site as in production ready. And it will, <coughs> in a Drupal as a backend, uh, you can push any content changes onto the quant CDN. At it, it will automatically uh, appear on your production site. And the final one uh, on my list is Tom that I'll discuss more in a detail. So Tom is also a uh, 
Drupal specific module. It's only work with Drupal. It's uh, Drupal 8 module is available. So any Drupal site, if you want to create a static site using that, you can use Tom on top of Drupal. So uh, let's talk about the benefits and the limitations about static sites. Uh, the first thing, it's very simple. If you you don't need to have any PHP or MySQL, no server side requirements. Uh, you can host it anywhere, any GitHub pages, Netlify. <clears throat> no need uh, for the caching mechanism. You uh, there are only HTML files, and most of the hosting provider uh, automatically compress those HTML files, so you don't need to worry about the caching, warnings, map cache, anything at all. So it's quite faster. No, no backend processing at server end. So all the files, and you can also use the CDN to so multiple places, and it will just uh, quite faster than the other CMS. You can say safer. Uh, in terms of security update and all, we can see there are lots of security update coming every every second week or any time you can see there are lots of uh, security updates coming on. And if you are using any CMS or in your, in your site, you definitely need to up to date all the codes uh, so that every time you need to redeploy the production with the security update. No database required, no database optimization, nothing else. So you don't need to worry about those things as well. Let's talk about the some limitations. Uh, so the limitations, there are no user related stuff. Everything is same for everyone. No authenticated user, nothing, no, nothing to log in actually. So it's a, if you need a simple static site, uh, if still want to use something, uh, any CMS or something like that, you can use multiple options to create static site and that will work for you. There are no form uh, in HTML. Without mm -hmm. any backend server configuration, you can't actually uh, submit the form. But there are workarounds. We'll discuss more detail. And the final limitation is every change requires a deployment. If you want to change any content on <coughs> uh, in the HTML, you definitely need to redeploy. So if you are talking about any CMS and all, uh, you just need to log in and update or edit any content and it will work. But in case of a static site, you every time you just need to redeploy uh, stuff on the server. Okay, so uh, with the static site, these are the benefit limitation we have. So still, if I'm going to create a static site and I really want to use Drupal, so as I mentioned, there are multiple options on top of Drupal that you can use, but I'm a Drupal guy, so I really love to use Drupal as a CMS for my backend so I can easily create content, I can easily create theme, and Drupal admin UI is quite helpful for me, so I can easily manage all the stuff with the Drupal. So let's suppose uh, if we need to create a new site with the Drupal and we want a static site to be uh, deployed on a production server, we can use Drupal plus Tom. So <clears throat> next step, I'll I'll just provide you how to create a basic Tom application on a local host. Then you can export the uh, static content and just deploy on a production site. That will work as simple as that. Uh, so what exactly Tom? Tom is a static site generator. It will just a Drupal module that will work on a Drupal only. It just create a uh, just export all the content using the JSON and all. And whenever you want to create or update any content, you just need to run your localhost again, log into Drupal, and it uh, create the export the static content and again deploy to the production. As simple as that. So as I already discussed these parts, like how exactly Tom will work, there are very quite good uh, documentation available that if you want to use Tom, how exactly you can uh, do that. So there are simple architecture of Tom. There's a multiple modules in Tom architecture, Tom static to create static site generation, Tom sync to generate the content and uh, config automatically sync on the site. And Tom Netlify is a module available if you want to use Netlify as a your hosting platform. 
you can <laughs> you can use Tom with the Netlify and there's a pap hook available. So whenever you push any content on your repo, it will automatically deploy with the GitHub web hook to Netlify and the production site is automatically get updated. Okay, so uh, I can show you the simple demo how you start with the Tom. So it's a quite simple. These are the basic steps that I'm going to follow. So let's start with the demo itself. So uh, this is my terminal. You can see my terminal, right? Yep, yep. Okay. Yes. OK, so uh, let's start with a simple site with the Tom. So I'm just, uh, there's a composer based uh, installation available. So you can directly install a, any Tom project with the Tom install. So I start with one. I'm creating the project. It's a simple step using the composer. You can just create a project and it just install all the dependency required for the Tom and it's ready to go. Okay, so this project is created as a static site. I can show you these are the simple files in the composer uh, in the project itself. The next step is just install all the dependency using the composer install. Just take a minute. happening i just want you to know that uh, i came across this particular stuff when i was working on a on a site and that is for uh, department of like uh, dfat or uh, I'm, I'm not sure the department name but yeah they want some static site and uh, i want to create a static site uh, but i don't want to use the normal html and bootstrap initially so i was looking into an option that how easily i can create a static site so i came across these multiple option actually i didn't use that but yeah still it's it's good i i can provide some glimpse that uh, it's really easy to create a static site using this so next step is just to install uh, and initialize this uh, tom this is simple just come on you can see so when you do the tom in it it will provide you which installation profile you want to use and there are multi, uh, you can see the demo minimal standard any profile you can use uh, let's start with the standard first and then i'll show you the umami as well DFAT was Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Okay, so the Tom initialized, initialized. And now we, what we just need to do is just to run the server so you can see your site is running. Kissing, uh, welcome to Dress Install. Your site is up and running using the Tom. And you can see this is the server is running in the backend. Uh, let's log in into Drupal first. So this is our Drupal site. 
And if I want to create a basic page, I can go to this and let's add a, add a basic page. Your content, I can also provide any URL alias. Uh, so, this is how we normally do in a Drupal. Now, I'm just creating static site using the <coughs> using the Tom. When you run this command, it will generate the static site, and you can also preview using the command static uh, tom preview, and the site will available on this browser. So this is the uh, HTML site running on your end, and this is the Drupal. When I change anything on this particular page, it will only apply on a static site when you export it again. So this is our basic page. You can see I'm going and updating this again. Drupal is updated. Still, you can see your static site have the previous information available. Let's go and again, I'm going to build this static. It's running. You can see the static site is automatically updated with this. So as for the file structure, I can also show you how exactly the file structure will look like if you talk about the um, so in the Tom file structure, you can see this HTML. This is your exported production ready site. So you you just need to uh, copy this HTML folder and upload it to your server, and it will serve as a normal HTML site. As simple as that. So in in the particular uh, when you export it, you can also provide URI option. So the base URL for this particular site would be set as a production site. So whenever you export the content, just use the URI option uh, along with the Drupal uh, Trust Tom static, and that particular URL will be your base URL for your site. So this is how Tom will work to create a static site on your local host. Now come again, like let's talk about how you can upload or use the Netlify as a different option, hosting option. So next, so this is how we do the basic setup using Tom. Now I'll come to the Netlify. There are good documentation available for the Netlify. If you go, uh, go to the tom.fii docs, there's a very good documentation available for everything. So this is the base. So it's also provide you the link how to deploy. So you just click on that and Netlify will open. It will ask you up for the GitHub or any other way to log in and you can create a site or deploy the site on a Netlify template. I'm just connecting to GitHub. I'm just creating a new site in a Netlify. As you can see, when you go to the Netlify, get your site in one minute ready. So this is how it will work. It really won't take more than one minute. So now your site is deploy, starting the build it, uh, 
the build is started on a Netlify. It will also provide you GitHub repository. If you click on this, the GitHub repository is available. Once this uh, building is complete, you will see all the files available in your uh, the GitHub repo. So just wait for the uh, deployment. Once the deployment complete, you will see uh, a domain from the Netlify. You can also set up your custom domain. Does Netlify mean that you don't have to do everything via the terminal like like you showed us before? What's no, uh, this is this is this is Netlify. They provide you a way. They provide uh, they provide a template that, that you can use uh, with the Tom integration. So. You just need to deploy on uh, Netlify. It will provide you GitHub repo automatically. So once it's deployment complete, you will see all the files available. And then what we will do, we will again go into the terminal, clone the repo, start our server, and <clears throat> all the configuration, everything is automatically synced uh, to Netlify. When we push to uh, any new content changes we want to do, we will do that. I'll just show you in a minute how exactly we will do. Saying is publish. Uh, this is the application that you can see. Welcome to the site install. It's on Netlify app. If I go to the repository, everything is available here. Let's go clone this site. So <clears throat> this is the master branch, and you can see there are uh, readme file available that how exactly you need to start uh, the process. So once you are on a local, after <clears throat> the repo, you have the repository on your local, just go there and run this command, draw. When you uh, run this command, it will install the, the same site on your local as well. And if you want to change any content, add any content, you can do uh, using the Drupal UI and it will automatically export it and it will be available to push into your branch. So installation is complete. I'm running the server. So okay, so now this site is started on the local environment. So the same site that we have on our Netlify app, the same site is available here. So if I go to the next tab and log into the uh, Drupal.
Okay, I'm just making a small change right now in the basic site settings. You can see welcome to the site install update. If I go to here and get status, you can see this configuration is automatically available and it's modified. If I go and add this to my repo, I'm pushing this to the branch and now let's take a look into this this once i push to master branch it will the master branch is for the production on a netlify so you can see this commit is available here and it started building the site once this build is complete we will see the updated site here this is some similar for the content as well if i want to create a new content uh, I'm basic page and now see the status you can see uh, it's automatically exported these new content and path alias as a JSON file now I can push these data into my github and that will automatically available in Netlify application so it's building right now I think it should be published it's published if you check this, you can see this is the updated content. So again, um, again I'm pushing a new content inside this. This is as simple as that. Whenever you push anything, it will deploy on uh, on the site. So you can see the next thing is added basic page. Now it's building, and then we will have a basic page one available once deployment is done. So still, it's not page not found because the site is still building. Meanwhile, I can also show you one demo that I. Uh, created for a umami theme I also started with a like <clears throat> there's a one more option uh, installation profile along with the Drupal so I created this umami theme with the Tom and you can say this is working this is Drupal version if I go to my terminal and export it again as a static site So uh, this is a static site I created uh, using the Mami theme. So uh, you can see 
all the language everything is available in a static site as well so multilingual is only used by uh, these folder name you can say when you have the html site you normally have the folders and inside that we you have a different html file so similar to that it exported in the same way so using the url you will see these multilingual features available everything is working in the same way what we have <laughs> in a drupal the only limitation is we can't use the like login and or contact form you can't actually fill that and it won't it won't work actually so for these particular we have we do have some work around i'll show you but yeah still let's see what happened to this page you can see now we have this basic page available in our netlify app so this is as simple as that you can easily push and create your content anytime on your local and just push it to netlify or you can export as a static site and deploy to any pro production server as you need this is kind of a architecture you can see uh, i already showed you in the demo how exactly this is working with the netlify Oh, let's talk about more limitation about uh, with, in terms of a Drupal. Uh, it's actually, uh, these are the supported feature you can see. There are uh, like alias, redirect, meta tags. Th those are already working. Responsive images, layout builder, everything, whatever we have with as a Drupal, those are still working with the static site as well. Uh, limitations, we discuss about these are for anonymous user only, no forms, no search and search API. Multilingual can only be by path and domain, so it it just uh, like if if you are going to export a static site or create a static site, you just need to use uh, folder structure to make them multilingual. Uh, there are few workarounds for the forms and all. Uh, so there is a, <clears throat> a Netlify also provide a form integration where you can use the JS to submit those form on a Netlify. Actually, I I didn't uh, uh, like work out on those things because uh, it was not my intention to use uh, these integration. But yeah, uh, I had like I was looking into things that how easily we can integrate. So that's why I'm showing you. But yeah, even if you want to try, these are the options that you can try with your static site. There are Lamada forms that you can integrate. There's a Drupal module also available for the uh, AWS Lamada, so you can use. Uh, the Lunar is also a JS-based search. So Lunar JS you can use uh, for the <coughs> search feature if you want to uh, create any search functionality uh, on a front-end site, you can use that. So, uh, any other thing like any JS framework you can use with your static site. So it's easy to go anytime you can create or look into that. Uh, I think that's it. That, that's all I need to show. I hope I didn't bore you <laughs> on that part. Oh, yeah. I'm happy to answer if I can do. So that's it. So this is a really rookie question again. I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. <laughs> so that sets up the framework for like the Drupal structures that are needed for data migration to then go in for a static site. So you set you you, you set up all the the shells of the taxonomy that's needed in that mm -hmm. and then you and and thereby creating like the shell or the skeleton for the static site that is then ready for like a data migration at a at, at the next point like off, after what you've shown us it's it's not exactly for the data migration all uh, let's suppose if you have a site still want to continue but you want to archive, archive uh, the cms part of that and yeah. uh, you just want a production site so in that scenario you can definitely uh, use uh, this static site generator to create a static site from uh, any cms or something like that. and 
that will work for for a mean while and again you can yeah. migrate those data those are html and tom also provide as in json structure of the uh, uh, content and all so you can definitely use those uh, exported content and can can be utilized in any frameworks to import those awesome thank you Oh, I just a, just a quick question. Um, did you run into any issues in particular, or was it all smooth sailing? Actually, it was very smooth in terms of a uh, normal generation and all. I tried with a different profile, different uh, themes, and it it was quite well. I'm getting the static site as whatever I had in a Drupal theme. So if you change or anything, if you can do with the Drupal Twig template, if you have site is ready with you, you'll get the static site as usual. I, I might have a question too. Um, it's Robert from WA Gov. Um, so from what I could tell, the CMS was update the updating the content, but then you had to do like a some sort of deployment for the content to reflect. How would that work with like a big agency with hundreds of administrators? Is there like a way of syncing the, the refresh so it was automatically updated or did you have to physically deploy once an hour or however it worked? So uh, like static site is not for a big or uh, if you have often changes in anything, you don't really need to use the static site. This is just for if you have a site and uh, that will sit on a for a time being like let's suppose you don't have anything to work uh, any updation or anything in a year or something like that so in that scenario you will use the static site uh, but it, it it is not the case that when you often use uh, or changes any content or adding new content then it's not a wide choice to have a static site anywhere thank you thanks Okay, thank you. Uh, I know we're um, looking at the product quant, so you've answered my question why quant over time. So thank you. Govan, uh, I was going to ask you, Govan, like, I mean, you started talking about Tom, a, Tom, Tom um, when you were looking at um, DFAT um, use case. And I, I might get this really wrong, but <laughs> I think the DFAT, the, the static part of DFAT used the mini site module or, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, was it was it such that you know Tom didn't suit that because it was an enterprise grade or what, why use the mini site module? Is that because it was part of a bigger website in terms of DFAT? I'm just just interested in that history. Yeah, yeah. So the mini site module is a different altogether is a different part. It just. Uh, serve inside the Drupal. It's not a, a generator or something like that. You have a static site with you. You can use mini site module along with Drupal and you can uh, just push uh, upload your mini site, the HTML, the gen generated static site into the mini site module. It's not for a generation only. The Tom is along with, if you want to create a static site from Drupal, you need to use Tom. It is the difference. Uh, the mini site just serve the files of a server inside the Drupal to serve the static sites. Yeah. Um. Paul, if it if it helps, Paul, uh, we had um in Gov CMS we had a customer 
which had multiple sites. And if, if I'm not wrong, because it's been a few months now, it was Cancer Australia, like they had different sites for different cancers, uh, sort of. And they were looking to consolidate that under a single site. So what they've done is the smaller sites, which were like only a few pages uh, big, they would convert those to static sites, and then they would host them via the mini site module in the in one of the main sites. So yeah. basically, yeah. what mini site does it it allows you to host static websites within your Drupal website. So you have your content with Drupal, but then you want to host something which is like a simple static site. So that was one use case where it was sort of like used that way. Hope it helps. Yep. Thanks. That's good.